Just a couple quick things before this video starts. Number one, the audio in the first minute or two is not the best. There's a lot of background noise, so I'm sorry for that. And number two, if you want to skip over the vlog part and just get to the review, please skip to eight minutes and five seconds. How is everybody doing? It is your boy Green Leaves Grower, bringing you guys something a little bit different today. I'm on my way to the dispensary in Millis, Massachusetts. It's called Comcan. It is the first LGBTQ and woman-owned dispensary in Massachusetts. They are also the first dispensary to bring cookies to the East Coast. Uh, they cultivate and sell cookies there, lemonade, the whole nine. So we're gonna go grab a couple Ace of that and uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a review, show you guys some of the buds and what it's looking like and what I think about it. So I'm gonna hit you guys up when we get there. I don't think I'll be able to film inside, but I'll show you guys what I get obviously afterwards and we'll smoke it up a little bit. So see you guys after, peace. So I just wanted to add in that they are a medical and recreational dispensary, um, which means you can obviously go there and get both. If you have a medical card, you don't have to wait in any lines. They have a medical menu, um, high CBD strains, edibles, everything you need, RSO. They have a lot of different options. Um, they're definitely one of the best medical dispensaries that are in my area or somewhat in my area. So I definitely picked the absolute worst time to go. Um, the traffic is terrible right now because it's four o'clock and it's also Friday. So I'm expecting the dispensary to be pretty packed because people are getting, you know, work checks. They're getting out of work for the weekend. They're trying to go home and relax a little bit. So I expect that it's probably going to be a little bit more crowded than usual. And I keep driving 10 feet and then I'm ending, ending up looking at some tail lights. So. So one thing about Massachusetts dispensaries is that they absolutely tax um, compared to other states that I've been to, um, which is unfortunate, but I mean, you kind of have to do what you have to do. That's why I like to grow a lot of my own stuff, but you know, a lot of growers, uh, they don't get down with dispensary weed at all. They don't like spending their money there. I don't really see a problem with it. I like to have different options and I still think it's cool to go over to the dispensary. Having it be legal and having the option to go there, I think it's really important and I think it's dope. I still think the weed is good. I mean, obviously sometimes it can sit out for a lot longer and it will be a lot drier. You know, we're talking about weed that's been harvested, you know, six months or even longer before. So, but yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. Prices are really expensive, but you know, they do have some good deals, especially if you're a medical patient. Starting out, you get like $50 off 100, I believe your first four times you go. You only have 30 or 60 days to go though, so if you guys are in Massachusetts and you do want to check out this dispensary, that is one of the deals that they offer you. But like I said, you have to go pretty quick to get that deal off. And then obviously other than that, when you have your medical card, there is no tax on the purchases. So you do save a little bit there, but yeah, it's gonna be like 55 uh, and eighth, I believe for the cookie strains. And then the, you know, the in-house strains that they're growing there, that they're cultivating are probably around 45 or $50 an eighth. And it is a little bit cheaper as you go up, but not too much, so. So if you are from California, you're somewhere where they already have cookies, which I think Pretty sure only California. Let me know down below. Is California is cookies in other states? I know that it just came to the East Coast to this dispensary. But if you guys have cookies where you're at or you've tried cookies, comment down below your favorite strain. What is your favorite cookie strain or lemonade? I'll accept all of those. My personal favorite that I've tried is Medellin. It is technically under the lemonade brand, but the Medellin goes super hard. It's a sativa and it's just a very clear headed, kind of like a motivational kind of smoke. Um, I really like it, so comment down below, what is your favorite cookie strain if you guys have one? So I'm thinking I was thinking we could go for the pancakes. I think the pancakes for sure, cause I haven't tried it yet. And it's 45 for an eighth right now. I've had Gary Payton, I've had apples and bananas. I think I've had pink rose. 
we'll go for you know what we'll go for the pink rose again so pink rose and some pancakes I right, lied we're gonna do pancakes and some Gary Payton so I'm gonna go run in use my med card and I'll be right back Alright guys, so we just grabbed an eighth of pancakes and an eighth of Gary Payton. Came out to $100 without tax. Uh, I'm not going to open it up here because one, they'll yell at me and two, I want to get some better lighting and some better shots set up. But yeah, this is what we're working with. Pancakes is coming in at 19% and the Gary Payton is working with an 18%. So very modest testing here. I'll give you guys a review when we get so, back. I'm just driving back now and I'm thinking, was it worth it that I spent $100 on a quarter quarter ounce of weed? And the answer is no, it was not. And I haven't even smoked it yet, but just growing your own, obviously if you grow your own, you know that it does not cost that much money for how much you end up yielding. Yes, it takes a lot of time and effort, but it is nothing in, compar in comparison as far as money goes. But I do like to splurge and even besides the videos, I do go to the dispensary sometimes. I like to grab different strains, I like to try different things and I like spending money which is not the best trait to have, I will admit. I do spend too much money, especially on weed when I like have a bunch of weed that I grew. But it's alright, I don't mind doing this for you guys. Uh, it would be cool to make a little video of it and plus I'll get some cookie pack to smoke. And honestly, in my other experiences with cookie, with cookies, it's really, I mean, I think they get kind of a, a bad rap in a way. I mean, obviously it's a very, very popular strain, but for people that really know about weed and know what they're talking about, um, it's obviously overpriced. Um, but Massachusetts is overpriced in general. If I were to go and get one of the just regular strains that they're growing over at Comcan, it's still $45, $50 an eighth. But if you go up to Maine or something and you're gonna get strains for like $20 an eighth. Um, really depends where you're at. I know Oregon is super cheap. Um, I know some places in Cali are really cheap. It really depends where you're at. Massachusetts as a whole, the tax is just absolutely crazy and they tend to charge quite a bit. It's very commercial. Um, it's not really the mom and pop kind of shops that you see when you go up north or in areas where there's a lot more dispensaries because there's more, more and more popping up in Massachusetts but they're pretty far, uh, few and far between and there a lot of them are commercial like I said. So. I'm gonna stop rambling. Next thing you'll see, I'll be back at the house and we will start to smoke some of this and I'll give you guys a review. Alright guys, so we're still chilling in my car. I apologize if the lighting is not the best. We're going to be starting off with some of the Gary Payton. Like I said before, it's coming in at about 18% THC, half a percent of CB, CBG, so it's not really got too much going on besides the THC, which is kind of expected out of cookie strains. Like I said, I think I paid $55 for this eighth, no tax. Immediately when you open up the bag, there is going to be like this pungent kind of skunky cheese smell to it. There is like a little bit of a tropical hint, like a little bit of a sweetness and fruit to it, but definitely overwhelming kind of just pungent aroma coming out of here. Let you guys kind of take a look inside the bag. I don't think you guys would be able to see it that well, but I'll show some better shots up on the screen. Yes, definitely, the more I get into it, the more sweetness I'm picking up, but definitely that first smell when I got in there was definitely pungent. It is looking, it's very dense, obviously, expected with um, dispensary bud. It's very dense. It does look very frosty. There's a couple nugs that have some purple on the underside. But yeah, it's looking good. I'm gonna give it a go now, so, and I'm gonna let you guys know, you know, how the flavor is. 
and we'll see. Smoking out of uh, this yellow pipe today. I'm not gonna load up too much into here. I just wanna kinda just, I just wanna get the flavor of it. Nothing too serious. Just put a tiny little bit in there. I wanna be able to give you guys an actual good uh, review without getting like too fucked up. Give you my opinion on the flavor and obviously a little bit of, a little bit of an uh, effect review as well. It is a little bit sticky, surprisingly, which is kind of rare, but when you crack open the buds, that kind of the middle is more sticky, the outside is more dry and solid. But we will give this a go. This is the Gary Payton first. Cheers. Okay. It has like a... It has a consistent taste with like haze. I can't describe it off the top of my off the top of my head, but it's kind of a it's a little bit earthy. I want to say it's earthy, and there was a little bit of sweetness to it. Honestly, I wasn't getting too much, so I'm gonna give it another rip right here. I don't want to torch it. Okay. Yeah, it's mostly just earthy. There's not too much going on as far as the terps. Um, no, no real fruity flavors or anything like that. But that was the Gary Payton. I'll give the flavor like a five. Um, the nose, I'll give an eight point five. I think it was pretty good. Um, we'll see how the effects are. Obviously, they're going to be kind of skewed because I'm mixing them. But now we have the pancakes. Is it? It is pancakes. Had to make sure. So we have the pancake strain. It's coming in at 19% THC. I can tell you right now, I do feel those two rips of Gary Payton already. It's definitely pretty potent. Um, looking pretty good. Obviously, here's the packaging. Pretty standard for the cookies. You know, we have it on the front and back. They have their own little logo for every strain. Now, this one's smelling... This one only smells like... I want to say peppery like it just smells like a spice cabinet honestly mm -hmm. like all of the spices in one not just one you know you got oregano you got all kinds of shit in there pepper all kinds of stuff it looks really good I'm gonna show you guys a better picture on screen but it's looking good in here there is a little bit of purple in each nug I'm noticing that the trichomes are more of an amber color so I expect this one to be a little bit less heady than that, that this uh, Gary Payton had a lot more uh, white looking trichomes and th this one was looking, let me see if I get a nug out. It's looking a lot more like a pancake color, honestly, an amberish color. Nose is really good, it's definitely sweet. Oh shit. Yeah, the nose is definitely, definitely pretty good on this. I'm gonna give the nose on this one an eight and the Gary Payton an eight and a half. I think the Gary Payton was just a little bit better. There's like a tropical kind of aspect to it after the skunk and after the stinkiness and this one's more just sweet and spicy over here and I do like I do like to have some tropical in um, in my flavor so that's why I gotta give it up to the Gary Payton and let's just take a, a little nug here but yeah two two little ass tokes of that Gary Payton and I can feel it for real I can feel that see like I'm, I, it is a little bit skewed because I'll be honest I don't smoke a hell of a lot anymore like I used to smoke a lot with uh, friends and stuff like Graham was pulling grams every day uh, now I usually just smoke to myself I've tried to limit you know how much I'm smoking just try to conserve like I don't try to overdo it I'm not smoking like two gram three gram blunts anymore like I'll smoke a joint here and there I like to just light up a bowl or a bong and take a couple hits just get right I don't like to get too faded but I'll give this a little taste Small little pack in here of the pancakes. Cheers. Okay, there was something more to this right here. I don't know what flavor exactly I'm getting, but it reminded me of a strain that I grew. I, I want to say it was a slurricane from a while back. The slurricane had more of like a blueberry kind of slushy to it, but there was something in here that just reminded me of the slurricane, like immediately kind of got like a, almost like a deja vu effect. But we'll give this one more toke here. Didn't have any specific flavors on that one, but I'm gonna try to give it for you guys right here. Honestly, this one's just sweet and earthy too. And this, I, I will say one thing about having the cookies and dispensary weed. 
like these are probably months and months old so that is why like I think that these two flavors are, are pretty consistent with each other the noses are a little bit different but just having weed that sat around for a while they both taste I don't want to say stale but there's not like a lot of terps you can just tell there's not a lot of terps to it like I said this one the pancakes kind of tasted like a slur cane that I grew before but it didn't have the complexity to it like that slur cane when I grew it like there was a hard hit of like some glue and then it was like blueberry like there was just definitely some sweetness to it and that's the advantage of when you're growing your own you get it so fresh as soon as it's done curing or done drying you can smoke it and all those terps are still there just super fresh like uh, the, my Tropicana banana like straight orange tangerine in your mouth when you smoked it up when you broke it up so that's why I always got to give it up to home grows and being able to grow your own but as far as these go the cookies and the dispensary weed I got to give the Gary Payton I'll give it like an 8 out of 10 I'm gonna give the pancakes a 7.5 out of 10 they're not terrible um, pretty standard like there's not really too much that's gonna wow you here like as far as terps I definitely do feel baked so I mean if you're trying to get high they do the job alright guys so this is about 20 25 minutes after I first smoked and for the effects I gotta give them like a 9 out of 10 I did mix the two strains as far as the, just, just the definition of being high and feeling high they're really hard hitting um, it came on really quick the effects somewhat I want to say not unenjoyable but definitely kind of a powerful hard hitting high I like more of a gradual incline to being high I like to just kind of just feel good and not be too overwhelmed with the feeling these guys came on strong um, kind of like a head pounding kind of deal where you just instantly just start feeling high that's why I don't really like smoking dabs as much but if you like smoking dabs and you like that hard hitting weed these two strains pancakes and Gary Payton's hard hitting for sure um, I do think that the flavor is definitely lacking on them just because these packages sit for so long they're growing so much of it that it takes a very long time for them to actually sell out of all of it and they're constantly just making more so I mean those two bags are probably more than three months old I would have to guess so that's why I prefer growing at home because you end up getting high quality weed it's not going to sit around for super super long um, obviously if you have eyes over it you can store it a certain way and make sure that it preserves all of those terps um, as you know they're volatile so a lot of them if they're just sitting down in not the best conditions and they're just in these packaging with no humidity packets or anything you know anything could happen and a lot of those terps are going to disappear the noses were definitely pre uh, prevalent and you could definitely get a strong strong nose coming out of it just the flavor was not there I mean they could just be two strains that were very earthy but they almost taste the same to me which just tells me that they're just they're more dry and they've been sitting around for a while so I'll give both of these strains an 8 overall um, not really my kind of strains like I got a purple punch from Comcan not too long ago and it was more of that gradual high that I'm looking for so it just could be these two strains but when you're dealing with dispensaries chances are that weed is sitting for a very long time before you're getting to it but yeah that's basically going to be it for this video if you guys enjoyed and you want to see kind of more vlogs or dispensary hauls like this then drop a like down below and subscribe if you're not already and thank you guys for watching it's been your boy green leaves grower peace